In Conwy, at Drew Pritchard's Architectural Salvage Showroom, Rebecca and the team are sorting out the latest stock. Whilst Drew and T are off to visit an exclusive private library that's known for having rare items from the Georgian era. It's about an 80-mile drive to the city of Manchester. Once the world's largest producer of cotton goods during the 19th century, Manchester is one of the fastest-growing cities in the UK and known for its fine architecture and influential music scene. So we seem to be in the city centre of Manchester, not on the outskirts. No, usually we're on the fringes or on a, in the demo site, but no, we're right slap bang centre in the middle of Manchester, and we're off to a place called the Portico Library. Portico Library was built in 1806 and designed in a Greek revival style, with funds raised by 400 of the most influential men in Manchester. The library is subscription based, and by paying a yearly fee, members have access to a remarkable collection of 19th century literature. It's run by head librarian, Emma Marigliano. Well, the ideal day for us, um, from, from what Drew might um, come up with, is certainly that we can sell um, enough to make us go, oh good, this will come in handy, but also for Drew to look around, be so impressed and say, I've got to become a member of this place. So uh, we uh, buying shelves today, I'm assuming, for the library. I would love to come away with library steps. For big, proper libraries like this, period libraries, we're talking Georgian here, yeah. to get one of those would be superb, right? But they're rare, so we'll see. There it is on the right here. That's it. Impressive building, actually. It is, isn't it? Anyway, we're there meeting a lady called Emma, so let's just see. So, perfect Georgian library steps. Not going to happen, but you never know. Look forward. Hello. Hello. Hi. Pleased to meet Great. you. Nice to Emma. meet you. How are you doing? Hi. Hello, I'm T. How are you? Hello. How are you? I'm Emma. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Uh, a pleasure. Can't a pleasure. wait to see inside. Well, you'll be very, very surprised. <laughs> I assure you. Very uh, pleasantly surprised. Pleasantly surprised. as well, don't you? Not that quiet Not in that this place, quiet. I'm afraid. Not That's with me uh, as a librarian. <laughs> <laughs> it's wonderful, isn't it? Look at this. It is. This is what we sometimes refer to as our crowning glory, yeah. actually. In a little tribute to the building, Drew's bought a little dome of his own. <laughs> <laughs> Do we, do we paint that? <laughs> yeah. Could we see a bit more of it? Because there's some around here that looks really interesting. Yeah, Would absolutely. That be okay? yeah. Have the full yeah. tour, please. If you'd, um, if you'd yeah. like to follow me, yeah. gentlemen. The Portico Library is quite a, a find. It's, it's really genuinely beautiful inside. It's really masculine. It's cool inside here as well. It's the sort of place you'd want to hang out. Oh, this is a lovely room. It is. It's a gorgeous room. This is what we call our reading room. Um, this is this is not no. original. No. However, most of these tables, these tables are. You've got a real mixture of ages and styles in here. Really nice. I've got a slight obsession with chairs. Oh, have you? Uh, yeah. Just a bit. Yes. He does this everywhere we go. Pubs. It's quite rude. <laughs> <That's very strange. laughs> People's houses, <laughs> wandering around, picking up furniture. No, but they're good. And they're sort you, of variation on a cockfighting chair, these. Oh, right. Yeah, so you'd sit in them a slightly different way. Not, not these ones particularly, but they were the earlier variant were designed to be sat like that. Wow. Yeah, but these are just a, a, a variation on that, really. Yeah. Slightly later variation on it. Well, I'm well, should imagine there's, there's something there's... myself. <laughs> Should you imagine there's nothing in here for sale? No, I'm afraid not. OK, so the stuff I'm that I'm not. here to look at is somewhere else. Is, is what we else? call in the gods. In the gods. <laughs> in, in the My mother always space. used to say that's in the gods, it's in the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the roof okay. space, the loft, the attic. <laughs> OK, well, let's go and have a look, shall we? Let's yeah. go up to the gods. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> oh. And here we are up in the gods. Oh, good. <laughs> so this is all just remnants of well, all sorts of bits of everything, a, really. Well, we've got our archives here as well. 
There are one or two things perhaps up there. Yeah. But um, starting with our ladders. All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I was hoping to find some library steps here. We don't have don't library have steps, I'm afraid. One's, uh, Just library ladders. Just library ladders. Okay. Yes. What else have we got? Okay. However, we have a couple of things here. There's this item here. Okay. That's original. That's original. That's been stuck on later on that one. I think oh, these two. Yeah, they're oh. original ones. Yeah. Sort of aesthetic movement. Okay, what else is it we've got in here? Um, what are there these? are two screens that we refer to as Georgian screens. Yeah. Um, I think that they may have been used at one time downstairs as kind of fire screens yeah. by Ooh. one of our people. Well, I'm going to get in there and get that. I don't know if you can actually, so if you can get in there, yes. This one's damaged, it's got a bit of damage to this one. All right. These mahogany and felt screens were built in the early 19th century and were once used as dividers in the library's reading rooms. Their high quality and simple design means they could fetch around £800 each. Now, these I do like. And they trip on. Oh, Slightly out good. of fashion, but they're always in style. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They've got that sort of feel to them. Super yeah. quality. What would I pay for those? Uh, a couple hundred pounds each, £400 for the pair. A little bit higher. Do you have a I figure in mind? Go, well, I know that they go for about 350 each. Um, I think they're probably worth more than that in our world, where I've got people mm -hmm. who will want these. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is, is this material is going to have to come out. And to okay. get it out is a real problem, because that's so thin. You can see they've, they've had a problem there. Mm -hmm. You can see how tightly those are put in. Um, well, if we go round it off, where do you want to be? 500, I think, is where you want to be, isn't it? If we can make it 550. No, that's a definite no. A definite a de no. Absolute definite no. I don't know if there's any... Is there anything else in here, though? Yeah, yeah, I do but Let's have... just see if we can put a package of things together, but I'm going to leave this one at that for now. OK, OK. It's you just... said that you were interested in, in one no, of the ladders? No, I'll no. I'm going to leave the ladders. I think they're probably right. best off here. If so, we uh, go up go here... There? Yeah. Actually... Now, that I do like okay. the look of. And I've got the other piece of it here as well. Fab. So. Yes, lovely. This English wrought iron and copper stick stand with splayed lion paw base was made in the early 19th century. Because of its elegant Georgian design, it could have a value of £400 once restored. It's nice, but it's a little broken. Well, it's only a it's little It's 99% broken. the sort of thing I like, and then just that little bit of broken bit's taken, taken a little bit off it. Apart from that, it's great. Really, really like that a lot. Well, what do you think? Um, what would you say? I mean, everything else, except for that, everything else is, is really nice. Mm. That's a good one. Um, how does um, £200 grab you for a broken stick stand covered in old paint? Thank you. A salvager Drew Pritchard is at Portico Library in Manchester. Oh, this is a lovely room. He has made a bid on a rare Georgian wrought iron stick stand. How does um, £200 grab you? But will librarian Emma Mariliano accept it? Up a bit. <laughs> Making that cheer, I think. <laughs> well, with, so I've gone up... You, you wanted 500 for those screens. Yeah. And then if I... I I'm just gone two, 200 for this. If we said the screens and that... And there's nothing else, is there? Well, the only other thing that I could possibly show you, then, that, that you lect, might be interested in... There? There's the base. OK. Right. If should we, we pass? Should we pass these bits yes, down? Yes, I think that, that would be easy because yeah, the base see. is down there, in fact. Yeah. So if I can pass that one down, that'll go straight and in. Then that, there you go. Restored in our own workshops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> lovely reading stand. Nice. This is lovely. This oak library lectern, with a sliding mechanism for angled adjustment, was built in England in the 1920s and donated to the library. Its original design and solid construction give it a value of £300. It's had a nasty repair underneath. A big bit of ply stuck across it. OK, so... Uh, 
So we're at 700 so far, plus that. What do you want for this? Let's see if we can have a nice figure for all three, then. OK. This is... It's all right, not really floating my boat. I'll take it if it was the right money, but otherwise I'd have to leave it. It's a good, saleable item. But it's not wow. So I would say all in, eight. Done. Happy? Is that all? Yes. Yeah. You wanted a grand, didn't you? I did, yeah, Yeah, and you know, I can't give you a grand for it. I'll, I'll come up a little bit more, then, 8.50. All right, OK. Yeah? 8.50, then. 8.50 for Excellent. the three. OK. The other good thing is that I know what to get Drew for Christmas, cos he obviously likes a pointing <laughs> stick. Pointing at everything with that. I could do that. one of those. In, in no, the, no. Uh, That's Captain, if you're doing Captain a Mannering. presentation. <laughs> you a bit like him, anyway. Yeah, I do look. Super morning down here at the library. I found some fantastic Georgian pieces. Um, I've got good stock there that we can sell easily, and I'm going to sell nearly all of it as is. So the two screens will go as is. The stick stand should go with a small repair. That's what's going to happen with those. I, I think I'd probably want to become a member of this place. It's a wonderful, cool, relaxing, airy place to be. It's just great, and I would suggest everybody should become members of this place. Wonderful place to be, it really is. I think that the visit today has gone really quite, quite well. Any extra money that comes in is always hugely appreciated, and I think Drew was quite happy with one or two pieces in particular, and I am too. <laughs> Emma, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. No, thank you. Thank it's you. Been, yeah. uh, the pleasure has been all ours. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen very often, does it? It's been great. Thanks, thank you. Lovely all to right. have yeah. met you both. See you. Bye bye. bye. Happy? Yeah, it's a lovely day. One of those little things that I love about cities, they've got that little, you know, like a little library like that just doing its thing. I think that's brilliant. Because Manchester gems. is an amazing city. Look at it. It is beautiful. Look at, look at all this. Fabulous place. Like the capital of the north. Drew's next stop is only a short drive away to Chorley, in the neighbouring county of Lancashire. Once a major producer of textiles during the Industrial Revolution, Chorley is now primarily known as a bustling market town. We're here to see a guy called John from Bygone Times. OK. And they have got a load of shop fittings they want to get rid of. They sent me some pictures, but they sent me pictures of them in situ, set up. Oh, from where they came from? Yes, and now they've been broken down and they're in the warehouse. My name's John Cunliffe. I'm the merchandise buyer for Bygone Times, which is a 40,000 square foot antiques collector's centre. Uh, it's been here for over 25 years. Yeah. I've been here 15 years um, buying props, uh, and items to sell to the public. I've got some large items that hopefully I can I get a good price for from Drew. It's all in a, a lock-up, which is not too far away. It's large uh, Edwardian display cabinets, uh, various other items. Hello. Drew. How are you doing? Job. Good to meet you. All right, I'm T. Hi, How T. Do you doing? Got Yes, please. Right. OK. So this is the uh, overspill from... Um, bygone times. Bygone times. Yeah. OK. So what sort of retail displays and stuff you've got here? Yeah, you? shop fittings. Walked into this place and I thought, oh, no, I've wasted my trip. I've come to this place and it's just junk, you know, real rubbish. Not what you want to see. Yeah, I think these are a bit too beaten up for me, even for me, I think. They've had this finish is different. That piece of trim is different. That skirting is different. That's been applied round the other side. There's too much work evolved in those. They can around. be cheap. Hey? They can be cheap. They'd have to be. <laughs> They'd have to be free. <laughs> right, OK, I can't do free. <laughs> Now, is there more across the road? Yeah, there, yeah. Then, or There's about six altogether. Six. Okay. Let's have a look at the ones over there. Right. Okay. I'm hoping in the place across the road, there's some untouched original bits of shop counter. Even just get a bit. You know, anything. More stuff from bygone, yeah. Yeah. A lot of fairground bits. Ugh. 
again just looked and I thought, oh, no. It's all sort of broken reproduction and been altered and messed around with. After an arduous climb, Drew finally spots something. Ah, we're in. Tell us about these. Are they the all display oh, cabinets? Yeah. Yeah, three of them, I think, in there. No doors? There's no doors, but it's got the drawers for the bottom. The bottom third is all drawers. They're in a bit of a state. Actually, no, they're not in a, they're not in a bit of a state. They're in a terrible state. <laughs> Um, but there, I can see the potential. There's three, most of the drawers are there. Yeah. This looks like a big shop back bar. Yeah, it is, yeah. These English oak shop display cabinets were manufactured in the 1920s. If they were in good condition with all the drawers intact, they could sell for around £300 each. How cheap are they? How cheap do you want them to be? Uh, ridiculously, obscenely, <laughs> you're practically right, give me, paying me to take them away cheap. Right. Give me a starting point. What do you want to be? 100 quid. What, for all three? Yeah. You are joking. <laughs> <laughs> I am joking. Yes, yeah, I am joking. I am joking. This one's got the drawers. Right. The top's collapsed. And there's no doors. This one's got half the drawers. Right. And one front of a drawer. There are bits of the There's bits, bottoms isn't there? of the drawers missing, but they can, they can be put yeah. together. Go on then, hit us with the figure. It's as they are. <laughs> Take a chance price. 100 each. Architectural salvage expert Drew Pritchard is at the lockups of an antique store in Chorley, Lancashire. Drew has found three large display cabinets with drawers missing and in poor condition. They're not in a, they're not in a bit of a state, they're in a terrible state. <laughs> Is the asking price of £100 each too steep? Can, will I be able to search out for the drawers? Yeah. Yeah. OK, let's get them out. Yeah, good. Let's have a deal on that, thank you. <laughs> Cheers. He said 100 quid each, fine, but he said 100 quid each with all the drawers. That's really important, because to have one drawer made, it's going to cost me, and also missing the handles, then. I need to get up there again and see if the rest of those drawers are in it. Right, OK. I know. John believes that the missing drawers for all three cabinets are somewhere in the locker. So the hunt begins. Well... So those drawers aren't there. Yeah. How oh. many are you missing? The whole... One whole cabinet's worth. They're definitely not in these bits. I'm, I'm in here now because I can see right into all of these. So are we looking at massive discounts because uh, the goods were wrongly described? <laughs> <laughs> are they, uh, what's it not fit for purpose? Um, we should call 300, didn't we? We did check on 300 on three complete ones. That's tough, so isn't it? Have That's you got, hard. Have you got, have you got two hard. full I've ones? I've got two full ones and one half one. 250 for the three. Yeah. That pains you, doesn't it? It does. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the trade, tough. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, there's two things I like about them. One is there's three, and the other one is the cheap. They're perfect for a kitchen. Imagine having those in your kitchen. All in all, made a bit of money. Uh, I think he's got a bit of profit in the stuff that he's got. Um, but I made a bit of money as well, so not too bad. And it's back to base. We've just been to Manchester, just nipped up the road, really. Um, went to a place called the Portico Library, right in the centre of town. This is a gem. Stick Doesn't look stand. like it immediately, but the more it you look at it, look, look this at is really early 19th century English stick stand. Very, look very handmade. Wrought iron, copper and cast iron construction. Original finish to the... See this underneath here? I've got to spend hours getting this black paint off to get back to that. Oh, I see. Beautiful feet that Drew says will polish up. Um, it's stunning. We don't actually often get them that good. Do you want me to hold one in? Yeah. What do you think? Fab, aren't they? They are, absolutely. Lovely. Not an easy sell, but when somebody wants them, we've got them, and I don't know of many up for sale of this size. Yeah. Anyway, let's get nice them in before the, yeah, before the wind blows oh, them over. Oh. <laughs> Drew has impressed Rebecca with his purchases from Portico Library. 
but what will she make of the cabinets from bygone times? Fires around the back. Yeah. <laughs> Just bought a lot of fire it's been, hasn't it? Look, yeah. every now and again, save up for next I'll, year. I'll make a mistake. Hands up, I admit it. Um, and I think I have done with these ones. Ooh. They're a bit gone, aren't they? They're a bit gone. But I've just had a thought when I was pulling this off the back there. Yeah. I've got three of them for 250 quid, for three. Now, this is going to cost me money to do, yeah. so all I'm going to do is Follow cut it, it there. Yeah. Put a slate top on them, sell them as uh, banks of drawers. That's a bit clever. Making something out of nothing. Anyway, let's get Gavin to get these off. Okay, they're just too, they're too heavy. They're too heavy. It's a new day, and whilst the team are hard at work... <laughs> Drew and T hit the road again in search of more spoils. It's about a 170-mile drive northeast to the village of Beedale in North Yorkshire. A market town, Beedale is home to St Gregory's Church, which was mentioned in the Doomsday Book of 1086. Today, T, we're off to see Dale's side reclamation. A father and son scene, um, Simon and Elliot Evans, and that's who we're meeting today. They uh, have got an architectural salvage yard, mainly building materials, but the father was involved in the antiques trade for years prior to this. Well, we generally salvage materials from old buildings that have been demolished. As far as the things that Drew might be interested in, he buys a variety of things. And I, I no doubt he wants them at, you know, the lowest possible price. So <laughs> we'll just have to see. <laughs> yeah, D reclaim Daleside Reclamation. How are you doing? All right, thank you. Drew. Simon. Simon, how are you doing? Good to see Hello, you. Hello, Elliot. <laughs> Great stuff. Thanks for having us. Um, just wondering if we can have a look round. Yeah, Is that sure. OK, can we yeah. go in? Yeah, sure. Right, then. Oh, it's quite big, isn't it? So you do all sorts of reclamation, really, anything at all? Well, no, essentially, we buy the materials direct off, off the buildings to be demolished. Mm. Pre-1930s, mainly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's just whatever we come across. It isn't long before Drew spots something. Yeah, I, I like these. What are they? It's a game. Uh, you, you, you have two together and you have a, a cane that goes over the top, and because they're different sizes, you, you basically jump over ah, them. I wondered what they were. Yeah. I quite like those. These hurdle stands were made in the UK in the 1930s. Made of wood with a weighted base, they were designed for use in school track and field activities. Each one is worth around £25. I have got some more, actually, in the, over there. More of these? Yeah. How many more have you got? Don't know without looking. Lots. Um, um, I, I, there must be at least another, another ten or so, anyway. OK. What do you want for them, the lot? Don't know, cos I don't know how many's there. Oh. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, if you... I, when yeah, you've counted I, them up... Yeah, yeah. Just we'll, have a we'll, deal we'll, I'll, I'll get... Uh, we'll get one of the lads to pull them out and, so we can see how many there are exactly. OK, OK. Yeah. All right. These can be really good hunting grounds for us because you just never know what you're going to find. Like that. Super cool item. With a good find in hand, Drew continues the search. Have, have you made this up? Yeah. It's not That's a bad a... job, actually, that, is it? No. It, it, obviously, it wants... It hasn't been... It, no, it, it hasn't been enough. finished. How much is that as it stands? Just take it as it is. Um. 4.50. Oh, OK, no, we'll believe in that. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. OK. There's some gym equipment here. Yes. It's something we do a bit of. Thought you were going to have a go then, Drew. You're joking. <laughs> You're joking. No <laughs> chance. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. It's got a big rip in it. What's up with it? He's got one. He's got one foot that, that's missing. One of these rubber feet. Oh, that's a shame. It is. This leather pommel horse was made in the UK in the 1970s. It came from the gymnasium of a private college. Today, it could be used as a design piece in the home or in a shop. With some restoration, it's worth around 700 pounds. Don't know how much is it. 
Two fifty. No. Right. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> Prices are high. Very. Very high. Um, I'm shocked, actually. Let's start at a hundred yeah. quid. A hundred pounds. A hundred quid. Bloody hell, that seems unbelievably cheap. Well, I'm not going <laughs> to pay a lot for it. I'd rather pay you two fifty for it. Yeah. You had the foot, and there was no rips in it, and these yeah. were in better condition. But it's yeah. not. Aye. You know, it's got a rip there, rip there, and a big one at the back, right. and a foot missing. So it's got yeah. issues, hasn't it? Right. So that's where I'm at, to be honest with you. Right. It's, um, it's got some problems. I can yeah. do stuff with it, but it's got some issues. 150. 150. 150, 150. Yes, I'll have that one. Okay, then. thank you very much. Good. Yeah, we'll all have right. that. Good. That's all right, and that's quite nice and heavy as well, that too. It does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's got. You pop that in the back of the van, won't you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> right, so, these pair of cupboards here, but, um, what's the story with those? Um, they, they came out of a, a Victorian building. You know, it was originally a boys and girls school, yeah. and, they, and, and they, they, they were just left there. These cupboards were manufactured in the UK in 1910. Made from oak with brass locks and pull rings, they still have their original shelving. The pair could sell for around a thousand pounds. How much are they? Well, I was wanting about 450 for the pair. 450. For them, uh... I'll go around and have a look at the other side of the other one. Yeah. The best thing about them is there's a them, there's a two, there's a pair. Um, a single one I wouldn't be interested in, but as a pair, they've got a lot more going on. I can't give you 450 for the pair. Because um, there's a lot of work to do. I can't just sell these as they are, can I? There's no money left. You're not leaving any money left in there at all. Oh, I don't know. I don't thought you'd be able to make a decent profit on those. Of course. Well, eventually, yeah, but I don't think... Uh... I mean, there's not a lot to do to them, really. I mean, if, if, you know, if you were to give them a good wax up and... Well, I've got to get keys made for them. Yeah. Have the tops repaired. Why, what's wrong with the tops? Well, they've got um, paint all over them. Um, make new kickboards for that one. It's covered in scratches. They're a different colour as well. If you look at them here, that one's a different colour to that one. Yeah, but that's probably to do with the, probably to do with the light, isn't it, you know? I mean, they wouldn't have been put side by side, would they? Nope, my eyes are fine. It's definitely... <laughs> a de and, uh, it's a definitely... A, that one's darker and that one's lighter, right. so they've got to be colour matched. So they're, right. they're nearly there. So, 450... Uh, uh, no, um, to be honest, three. So that's where I'm at, 300 quid. I'd usually pick them up at an auction house for about 250. So I think three is seeing you a good profit. We'll have, we'll have a look at the other... those... Um, that, th th those uh, the form things. Yeah. What's it things? All right. See, see if we can do a deal on the two. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. You've dug them all out now. Yeah. <laughs> Jumping over things. Yeah. Yeah. The game. <laughs> the game. There's not one to match that one. Is there? Never seen you buy half a banister before. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're just a good shape. Yeah. That's all. I see them as. Doorstops. Just a, mm. a cool looking doorstop because it's got enough weight in it at the base to hold that back. But um, yeah. Oh, just uh, decorative items to put on a shelf or something, you know? Yeah, you never know. You never three know. or four. To, if you graduate them down to three or four. Yeah. Or clocking tea around the back of the entrance. <laughs> yeah. <tree and> <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. You've got plenty of influence <laughs> on that already. <laughs> There's 25 in total. 25. If my, if my counting's accurate. Okay, so what do you want for them? 200 for the lot. 200 quid for the lot? Yeah. Um, yeah, well, I'll argue with about that. We'll have those. All right. There you go. That's All straightforward right. and easy. Yeah. So there you go. I've been very fair with you on those, so I've yeah. still at 300 quid for that pair of cabinets. And then I think we're doing... Three, a 350's got to be reasonable. Come really? On. Drew Pritchard is in Beedale, North Yorkshire, at a salvage yard run by father and son Simon and Elliot Evans. He wants to buy a pair of oak cupboards. But can he get Simon to come down on the price? Three, a three fifty's got to be reasonable. Come really, on. it has. It, it has. I mean, I, I mean, just, they, I didn't even knock what, you on I, that. No, on but that I thing. mean, where are you going to get a pair of cabinets from? Well, every yeah. antique fair. Oh yeah. Well, there's six hundred <laughs> of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So meet in the middle. No. Three, two, five. Go on, then. There you go. There you go. That's not too bad. All right. Overall, good day. Um, surprisingly, 
good, actually. And that's just one of those things, you know, when you come to somewhere, you think, oh, you know, you never know, I've got to call in. I always call in, and it's always, this is the reason why. A great little haul of pretty cool stuff. Very happy. Pl a pleasure to meet uh, Drew and T, and uh, more importantly, to be able to do a bit of business. I wasn't expecting that. So, yes, I, I enjoyed it. Well, look, cheers, thanks, Elliot. Cheers. Yeah. Nice to meet you, yeah. Simon. Yeah, Pleasure. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah, all the best, Tate. We got there in the end. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right, mate. See yeah, you. Okay. Bye. Come on, then, Miss Daisy. <laughs> Do you know what these are really handy for? Go on, guess what these are. Uh, uh, legs off a... No, hurdle thing. <laughs> Camp pirates. And if you use pirates' legs, there was a, there's this company pod. and they were making legs for pirates and yeah. they went out of business, oh, so we've just it. bought the uh, what's yeah. left of them. These yeah, are I'm the, not falling for that one. These are for the taller ones. Would I lie to you? Yes. That's a tall red <laughs> communist pirate. That one. You've got a little green yeah. lefty this one is, there. This is formal wear. Tory, oh, Tory pirate. What, what are they, really? They are for things you put on. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah. hurdles. School hurdles. School put hurdles. them on. Put a cane on them and jump over them. I used to hurdle for Cheshire. There you go. There we go. Mm -hmm. Should have known that, shouldn't mm -hmm. I? Um, I think they're brilliant doorstops. <laughs> Another horse. Ah, but these are the saleable ones. Well, these are the ones I can sell. Metal legs and leather, not suede. Alloy sure. hand grips with hardwood. Yes. OK, so they've got a bit... It's got a lot more about it, and it's just the right... It could I do like... with being... Whatever. <laughs> what are you going to say? It's just the right height. I'm not the right height, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can adjust it. Now, the only problem with it is it's damp. Uh, Very. So you're going to have to dry it out. Great coloured legs against the leather body. Usually the bodies are suede, so this is quite unusual, actually. But it's so damp. I mean, it's cold. It's like an ice cube. So I think we'll keep that in the office in a couple of months and we'll get it on the website. Gav, can you give us a lift with this fella? A pair of... A pair? A pair. Fantastic. Of English oak estate cupboards, matching height, all original furniture on them, all shelved to the interior with original oh. shelving. Three, two, five, the pair. That's fantastic. The two estate cabinets, love them. Love them, love them, love them. Um, you can't get enough items where people uh, use storage. So, perfect. The next day, while the team gets to work on cleaning and restoring the items from Daleside Reclamation, Drew is back on the road again. Today, he's got a hot lead about a country estate that's been owned by the same family for seven generations. To get there, he's travelling 250 miles northeast to Northumberland, near the county town of Morpeth. We're off to meet a chap called James Cookson, who owns Meldon Park. Um, our family have lived here really since it was built in 1835. The, the house is really um, part of the, the larger estate and we are involved in farming, we're involved in forestry and we let properties out. But um, recently we've just opened a cafe and um, we're starting to get into uh, the market with the general public more so than we really ever have uh, before. Uh, the house is full of old stuff. There are the odd bits for sale, but um, it really, it's, I suppose it depends on Drew, on what he's looking for and, and what he thinks. Oh, look at that view. <laughs> look you, at that. You can see, you can see look, exactly why they built this Look, area. look at that. That's just incredible. Wow. Good, go. Gordon. There we go. James. Drew, hi, hi, good, to you. good to see you. Good to see you. Hi there. Good to see you. What a beautiful place. Fantastic, isn't it? Oh, Fantastic. Wow. Come on. In you come. Thank you. Nice. Are you expecting floods? <laughs> <laughs> I think if we flood, we're in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> the whole country's in trouble. Oh, mm. nice. Mm. That's a hell of an entranceway, isn't it? Yeah, no, it's lovely, isn't it? That is um, great. 
Is, uh, is oh. this, this an original feature, then? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's great. It's that's been, in the, been in the family since <laughs> 1835. Really? You know, nice. yeah. so, so, um, Georgian... Uh, <coughs> yeah, late, jo late Georgian, Georgian and um, uh, the, the, nice. the net was... Like, know, it's very original. Yeah. It is. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, sought after these days. It, uh, it, it creates a lot of... It probably <laughs> creates more entertainment... We've got a couple in the DNA. <laughs> most, <laughs> <laughs> most stuff. Um, no, but, it's, um, I love it. These Georgian houses, they just... They are my favourite. Everybody, I know, always bang on mm. about them. Just the proportion. I mean, look at that. It's just perfect. Yeah, no, it's glorious. It's just and, perfect. Um, well, I'm here to, you know, have a look around, really. Yeah, I'd love to look at the house. Yep. But um, I'm already spotting things that I like. Look <laughs> <laughs> it's, so, it's so rude. I don't want to be rude, but... No, no, no. I, well, I love that. Do you? That's yeah, yeah. great. <laughs> you, you're laughing. <laughs> don't, you, don't, you, don't you like that? I love it. But, oh, I love but it. Actually, I love I'm it. the only, um, I'm the only person... Looking. In the that, family, that loves does. It. Yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing for me. That's a good thing for me. It's just... Look at the wear. Man, it's just lovely. Yeah. What a great chair. It's not often that I completely fall for a piece of furniture and I have done out there. There's an armchair out there in blue velvet which has got wear on it, which you couldn't make up, and it's a staggering, staggeringly beautiful little piece. This late 19th century upholstered armchair with velvet fabric and ball and claw foot is desirable because of its unique colour and wear. After restoration, it could fetch about £1,300. So, uh, I don't know. I didn't think anything was in the house was for sale, but is that? Um, uh, no, I mean... No? Sure? The, um, is the, uh, well, it's not, not for sale, no. Oh. Name. Okay, but um, unless you offer me an unfeasibly large price, then, <laughs> Just I, can't, <laughs> then I can't refuse to. <laughs> Would I can't refuse? Oh, right. I'm going to overpay for it. I want it that much. I'm just going to pay way too much money for it because I love it. And I know that if I put that on the open market, my clients would literally be clamouring to buy that. I know they would. I think I would pay for that chair eight hundred pounds. I know. <laughs> I know. You're actually thinking about it I, now. No, I would. I would. I think it's. I think it's absolutely lovely. It needs. This is actually right. That. Yeah, yeah. Is a big problem. Mm -hmm. so you've got to unpick the upholstery mm -hmm. and fix it, and then put it back on. Mm -hmm. So, but I just think the shape is just lovely, and that wear is quite astonishing. It really is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, that chair without that wear. 350 quid. Yeah, max, yeah max, absolutely. No, I, absolute absolutely max. Well, I, 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 yes, I agree. I, I'm afraid I totally agree with you on yeah. the wear. OK. Um, Do you want to leave that one there? We'll discuss well, it later. Can we, can we park it and discuss Let's it later? It. I went in with a very good bid, and I will improve on that. I've got a figure in my mind that if I have to end up there, I will. It's that good. I think from his first reaction on the chair, it will be mine. I'm fairly sure. Oh, you've got lovely... Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, now you're talking. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. This is great, isn't it? Yeah, it's in, um, like, yeah. it needs, needs a bit of TLC. Yeah. Tatty. Mm. Shame. All fixable, though. Yep. This is, um... Yeah, it's rather lovely. They were designed because they, these houses are so drafty. Mm -hmm. That's a very tall one. Yes. It's usually only about... There. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, though. Is that leather, originally? This is leather, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I like that a lot. But the, the, this, the sort of stuff like this is what really, mm -hmm. really gets me going. That, that, I love that. It's gorgeous. That's mm -hmm. not for sale? No. Definitely not, no. Really? No. Yeah, yeah. Definitely not. OK. OK. Get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, um... Actually, this is, um... His... Philip's, um... I think it's a Mauser. Wow. Oh, yes. Now you're talking. See, that's the wrong that's way round. fabulous. You're going to be able to get that out of there now. There you go. It's no, the right no, it's the right way around. Wow. And it's got the, um... Battles. Zand River. Bethlehem. Stobart's Neck. Because it's seen action. Mm -hmm. That's what all collectors of this stuff want. Mm -hmm. This is look up history. Mm -hmm. And also, he must have been a. It has. It's been decommissioned. So yeah. It's, um... No, I mean that's lovely, and it's great unrestored condition as well. That's so nice, repaired. But because any collectors of this stuff, 
God, this is in action as well, isn't it? That wouldn't have been standard issue, would it? No, I don't think so. This would have been... Would it not? Officers, no. would it? No. Really? No. no. He'll have bought this for himself. Is that right? Yeah. God, that's nice. I mean, we're so sport nowadays. Nice. Lovely. Very nice. Very good. Lovely. Just mm -hmm. having all those dates on there as well. Mm -hmm. That's great. Mm -hmm. Great history. Great history. Okay. Lovely. Next stop, the cellars. Now, this is a cellar, isn't it? <laughs> <Right. Yeah. laughs> Not just a hole in the ground. Oh, blimey, look at this place. Blimey, look at these. My God, safe, wheeled safe, sorry. Yes, yeah, yeah. There's nothing in them, I'm afraid. Oh, you, you've checked. <laughs> well, <laughs> the locks don't work, um, and we did get, so we had to drill them, and we, I think, um, Jeff Arthur nearly had the money spent before we got <laughs> anticipating riches, but um, beyond your wildest dreams, it wasn't. We, we we were kind of had to, we were in a kind of cloud of depression for weeks afterwards. I would imagine finding three safes and they're all empty. Yeah, you know, it's a depressing. That's God. They've been here. That's going nowhere, is it? No. Mm -hmm. I mean. Lads, you no. strong, healthy. <laughs> I've I'm got a very sure. strong guy who works for me, but none of the, none of the above. I that's, think got, that's, the that's going nowhere. Just no. D just a hundred times no. Too much hassle. Next is to the outbuildings, where James has something he thinks might interest Drew. Oof. This. Blimey. That's a big one. It's been here as long as I can remember. Do I, do I need this in my life? Do I need the hassle of that? It's a huge piece. The only way to get it out of there is to disassemble the whole thing. Then it needs full restoration. And who's got a house that big anymore to put it in? Not many people. The hassle of getting that out. Because I'll take it apart. And that's yes, you always, would, yeah. you know, you yeah, take the whole thing absolutely. to pieces. And, uh, mm -hmm. I'm going to respectfully say thanks, but no thanks no. again. Well, that's, that's fine. Yeah, is that all right? That's, yeah, absolutely fine. Um, but what I'd like to do, if we can go and see your cafe. Mm -hmm. Good idea. Yeah? Fantastic. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll do that. Spot on. But it's not just tea and cake on Drew's mind. He also wants to discuss the blue velvet chair. Thank you. I'm still very much in love with that blue armchair. Um, even though it's nothing special, but it's just got that colour is quite wonderful. Um, so that, I'd be interested in that. Right. It's, so what, it's what's your, what would be your best? What did I bid? It's eight, mm. 800. Nine. And that's really going over the top for that chair. Because if it wasn't for that covering, that's a 300 quid chair at best. Would you give me a 1,000, Fred? No. 950. Oh, no. Uh, look. 95, because I'm, I'm, I'm pushing the boat out. I really am. Okay. If it was worth it, it's not that we haven't got the money to spend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just has to be... Fine. There's well, got to be a I, turn in it. And I, I'm going to have a trouble parting with that one as well. Because <laughs> uh, it's great looking, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Just great. So, what do you think? 95? We'll do get 95. Do a deal? Yep. Good man. We'll have that. Very good. Great. I can have a cup of tea and a cake. Excellent. <laughs> it doesn't get much better. Thank you very much. Brilliant. I ended up paying way too much. Probably twice what that would be worth unless it had that covering on it. Financially, today, won't work out because I probably won't sell the chair. I can, as soon as I saw it, I thought, love that, I want to keep that. Every now and again, I find something which is just, just special that ticks all those boxes I'm always going on about. And that's it. It's not the best thing in the world. Antiques don't have to be, but, God, it looks good. That's enough. Well, look, James, thank you, man. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Good to meet you. Thank you. Tea, thank good you. to meet you. And Thanks fabulous, very much. Fabulous cake. <laughs> <laughs> good man. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. You know, it's been interesting. It's been good meeting the Drew and T. They seem charming and obviously very knowledgeable. I've learned quite a bit. You know, it's been a good day. So basically, now we're we going straight back to your house. Don't even bother taking that chair to the sh to the shop. I can't believe I paid that much for it. <laughs> What's the need for bumps feeling? Absolutely mental, mental money I paid for that. I'm not going to part with that for a while. No, I'll hang on to that. 
just uh, I want to enjoy that a bit myself, to be honest with you. Let's go home and uh, ex try and explain to everybody why I've made them no yeah, money today. You can do that. Yeah, OK. With trepidation, they head back to base to show Rebecca the chair. I really like it a lot. And I paid way too much money for it as well. What do you think? I love the colour that's left. <laughs> That's not the reaction I was after, to it's be honest. It's absolutely beautiful. Don't you like the wear? No. No? That's a shame, cos it's going in the living room. <laughs> it is. <laughs> it is. It would appear yeah. to be some it sort looks, of discussion needs to be had over that. It looks really comfy, though. <laughs> you don't like it? What did you pay for it? £925. Pounds. Sorry? Uh, £925. Pounds. Nine? No. Nine. Nine? I know, went over the top. Just fell in love with it, had to have it. Don't do it very often, maybe once every couple of years, but I did drop, drop the ball. I paid too much for it. I know I paid too much for it. I went in high to begin with, you see, because mm. there, there was all sorts of other stuff there as well. It was great, really, really nice. I don't think it's... I think it's going to come off too, but it's not going home. OK. Gutted. <laughs> so I paid too much. I'll sell it. I will make a profit on it. But it'll be a very small profit. It'll be like 50p. About 100, 100 quid. 100 quid? 150 quid. Keep going, too. We'll go through them. Don't you like it? No. You're kidding me. <laughs> You're kidding. 